Greetings everyone, I've been reviewing a lot of pretty expensive camera lenses recently, so let's swing the other way and check out the TT Artisan 17mm f1.4. It is a fully manual Chinese lens offering an APS-C image circle, so it's available on Sony E-mount, Canon EOS M, Fuji X and Micro Four Thirds mounts. I've actually had a look at this lens already on Sony E-mount, but TT Artisan have just sent me a Fuji X one to see how it performs on a Fuji system also. As usual though, this is a totally independent review, we'll be looking at both its strengths and weaknesses. Its price is 120 US dollars or about 110 pounds here in the UK and that is a really low price for such a very wide angle lens, the full frame equivalent of 25mm and especially with such a bright maximum aperture of f1.4 for letting in loads of light and getting noticeably out of focus backgrounds. The lens physically is very small with an unusual trapezoid shape and supporting a diagram of its internal optics on the outer barrel, that's a first for me. As I mentioned already, it's a totally manual lens without any electronics. It's based on a very shiny metal lens mount without any weather sealing. Most of the lens's body is taken up by the wide focus ring, which turns extremely smoothly, being nicely damped, although it can be easy to accidentally change. The lens shows just a little focus breathing as you change focus, zooming in a bit as you focus more closely. The aperture control ring comes at the front and it has evenly spaced gentle clicks every half stop of aperture. The front of the lens has a very small 40.5mm filter thread and the lens did not come with a hood. Its lens caps cruise in place, something I really hate, although you don't have to screw it in much at all and at least that makes it a little more secure. Overall, its design certainly looks a little unusual, but in every other way it's a typically good quality, metallic, manual focused little Chinese lens. Now then, on to image quality, I'm testing it here on my Fuji X-T3 with its 26 megapixel APS-C sensor. At f1.4, we see good sharpness in the middle of the image, but low contrast. The corner image quality is uselessly soft. Stop down to f2 for only a touch more contrast in the corners, but excellent quality back in the middle. At f2.8, image quality is razor sharp in the middle. The corners are still dreadfully soft, but some kind of image is starting to make its way through there. Stop down to f4 and f5.6 for gradual improvements, but it's only really at f8 or f11 that image quality is acceptably sharp in the corners. Overall, well, this is a very low priced lens and it's a bit of a low priced performance, especially in those image corners, but it's also well worth bearing in mind that if you're shooting at f1.4 in order to get out of focus backgrounds, then sharp image corners are not really essential. Alright, let's look at vignetting and distortion now. The lens projects a little barrel distortion, notable but not too bad. Vignetting is there at f1.4 but it's not disastrous, at f2 and f2.8 those corners brighten up pretty quickly so the lens is actually corrected reasonably well here. Let's take a look at close up image quality now, the lens can focus down to 20cm which is pretty useful for shooting smaller subjects, at f1.4 close up image quality is acceptably sharp but contrast continues to be low top down to f2 or especially f2.8 for contrast to catch up with sharpness here. How well does this lens work against bright light? There are quite a few problems here actually with some pretty complex flaring patterns even when those bright lights are just on the edge of your images. And while we're working in the dark let's look at coma levels, at f1.4 coma smearing is really strong on bright points of light in the corners of your images. Stop down to f2 to see it greatly reduced and at f2.8 any colour fringing that was there has gone too, but still maybe not your first choice of lens for professional astrophotography here. Let's zoom out a little and look for sun stars, stop down to f8 and they really begin to emerge and at f11 and f16 they get a little stronger, very nice. Finally bokeh. The quality of this lens's bokeh is just good, it's not super soft but neither is it really busy, sometimes it can look really quite pleasant. Overall, if this lens had cost more than it does then I would have to class it as a failure, as you'll have figured out by now it has plenty of optical issues. 
However, if you don't need sharp corners in your images at bright apertures, then actually it's fairly capable of getting good pictures, and its low vignetting and distortion and reasonably nice bokeh mean that, considering its very low price, it's an okay budget option for certain uses, namely shooting at f1.4 to get out of focus backgrounds. Hope you found that interesting. Thankfully for this lens, I put high stock on value for money, so if a lens is super cheap, then I do feel a little more forgiving towards it. If you have found this video helpful, then be sure to check out my Patreon page in the description below. There, supporters of this channel can find all kinds of bonus content. Thanks everyone, see you soon, and God bless.